Welcome, please gather round Adam's Blessed to this week's short lesson on what in Adam's name is going on with electricity in the world of Fallout. Have you ever gone into an old decrepit building, read some terminals, reprogrammed some defense turrets, snagged a fusion core, and while you're riding up the elevator to the top floor of a destroyed building, thought to yourself, what the hell is powering this thing? How are you able to do almost everything the pre-war people could 200 years after the world was nuked and left to rot. I sure have, and as a result, I combed through the games and online resources to get to the bottom of this question. I found some answers, some more questions, and a nice pile of conjecture as well. Let's first consider several ways that both small and large settlements in Fallout could source and use their power. The first option is that they just don't have any. It is the post-apocalypse after all, and not having any sort of electricity would probably be very common. Alternatively, settlements could be powered, or at least partially powered, using energy storage, whether that be a fission battery, fusion cells, or some other source. These can maybe be taken somewhere and charged, or swapped out when they are dead during the normal course of trading. Power like this would likely be for personal use and wouldn't be able to power anything very large. It is also possible for settlements to have their own power generation devices. Windmills, solar cells, combustion generators, or what have you, can provide power to an entire settlement, or at least several homes. This setup could also be augmented by people using energy storage devices for small personal things. Lastly, we have a situation where a settlement draws all or most power from existing pre-war power networks, in addition to maybe making their own power or using some sort of battery. So let's take a look at all the Fallout games and see if some of their communities fall into these categories. Completely unpowered settlements of note would include Shady Sands in the first Fallout and Arroyo in Fallout 2. In fact, most good examples of completely unpowered settlements seem to be from the first two Fallouts. Nothing in either settlement hints towards them using electricity, and there doesn't appear to be any electrically powered equipment or anything that would need to be charged. Likewise, the Great Con Camp in Red Rock Canyon is similarly powerless in New Vegas, as is the settlement Oasis in Fallout 3. Small settlements, usually in dark places like subways or caves, can be mostly powerless with some lights being powered by batteries, although these are typically very small communities. Junktown may be a larger example of this, since there is no indication of anything else being powered except for a neon sign in Gizmo's place. I don't count slot machines as necessarily being electrically powered, since they could conceivably be fully mechanical. There is no generator seen in Junktown. And if all you needed power for was a neon sign, a generator might be kind of overkill. For communities with their own power source, vaults are a great example, whether they still have their original occupants or new ones entirely. Likewise, settlements like Rivet City uses an old nuclear reactor from the aircraft carrier. The boomers at Nellis Air Force Base use a combination of solar and biodiesel, and Diamond City is powered by power noodles, and I mean that in every way. People power their bodies with noodles, and the stand itself is built around a large generator with power lines running to all the other buildings. It seems that once communities reach a sufficient size, then they can put together the resources to build their own reactor, or fix up an old one. Lastly are the settlements that are powered by pre-war power networks, the best example of which is probably the Strip, who gets its power from Hoover Dam, like it did before the war. There is a big gray zone, however, with Fallout 3 and Fallout 4 in particular, where some settlements get their power from a source that cannot be identified visually, no generators or batteries, and therefore the possibility of tapping into pre-war systems seems to be the only option. Now I know what many of you may be thinking, how could power stations still be working after so much time has passed? If the power plants look anything like the rest of the buildings in Fallout 3 and 4, I'm sure they're ready to cave in at any moment. Well. Let's save that for a little later, and just all pretend like having power plants work for 200 years without human intervention is just a normal thing, okay? Fallout 3 sets a precedent that up until its release was not ever explicitly stated, implied, or really even thought of. A terminal entry from a ghoul scientist in Fallout 3 mentions that she was able to tap into the underground power lines that were live. This is not a one-off thing either as she states that if you know where to look, they are buried all over the wasteland. So there is power to be had from the old power networks, and that power is enough, at least in this case, to power a satellite array. 
The infamous subways have all sorts of lights and signs still lit up after all this time, showing that this power is coming from somewhere and is most likely the old network. No large generators are found in the subways, similar to what we can see in the vaults, and smaller generators that Wastelanders sometimes use are also absent in the subways, except for where Wastelanders have made impromptu living spaces. These are the generators that can be found in Fallout 3, and in the game files are labeled clearly as generators. These things, however, are also found all over the place, but are not called generators. Rather, they are called Electrical Box 01. What are these? That is a good question, and their presence in the Capital Wasteland is the best evidence we have for a vast pre-war network that is mostly, but not always, underground and still live. So after getting an electrical engineering degree from the University of Wikipedia, I experimented a bit with these electrical boxes in the classic Fallout 3 style. And by that, I mean I just started shooting them. It was a remarkably effective investigative technique, and I highly recommend it. What I found is that these electrical boxes blow up quite nicely, start on fire, spark, and show us something interesting. Three large coils of wire are exposed, which from my highly qualified and fresh education is indicative that these are transformers. These wouldn't be found in a generator, so that is off the table. Although the super mutant behemoth trapped behind an electrified fence makes you think that these electrical boxes are generators, since destroying it kills the electricity. This is important because look on the sides and look where these pipes go. They go into the ground. They are fed power from the old underground network and then send the transformed power into other underground power lines, very much like the ground transformers that are found all over neighborhoods, often in those very large green cases. Look at a place like Evergreen Mills and you will see several of these all outside the facility and upon going inside we find several powered objects including terminals, signs, and lights with no other obvious power source. So where are these power sources then? Well, in Fallout 3 we are not aware of any power plants in the base game. Yes, there are substations but those aren't generating power. We don't know of any real power plants until Broken Steel added the only power works a power plant that presumably always existed and was just blocked by ruins and debris until the events of Broken Steel takes place. We don't know how this power plant generates power, but given the very long time between the Great War and Fallout 3, assuming it is nuclear powered is reasonable. This example of a previously unknown power plant becoming accessible is probably not a one-off. An area such as Washington DC very likely had fortified possibly even buried power plants to help ensure that any kind of attack would have difficulty knocking out the region's power. It is important to acknowledge as well that the infrastructure was massively damaged in Fallout 3, and with it, the power network. There are many buildings that don't have a single functioning light, and some buildings even show partial functionality. The Statesman Hotel that Riley's Rangers get stuck on have some lights that work inside the building, However, the elevator, which is their key to escaping, does not work, and the player needs to get a fission battery to allow it to operate, which could indicate that even parts that may have power may not be getting enough electricity for power-intensive machinery to operate. Fallout 4 has some similarities to Fallout 3, namely in that there are many areas with no obvious power sources. The Commonwealth, however, was quite different in its power networks as it appears that a lot of effort went into decentralizing the power grid. Mass Fusion was the largest power supplier in the Commonwealth, and there is a lot to be said about this company that I'll have to save for another video. Suffice it to say that the company was known in the pre-war for generating power not through fusion, but through conventional fission methods, through the so-called plutonium wells and small junction boxes that were installed in people's homes. The plutonium wells appear to be isolated solely to Concord and are seen attached to buildings with wires running off of them to power the entire town. How they work is not exactly known. However, Mass Fusion insisted to the public that all these technologies were fusion power and not fission based. Even though the name of some of their technology like the plutonium well literally has the word plutonium in it. Pre-war corporate America was taking advantage of the awful education standards since apparently no one knows the difference between fusion and fission anymore. This fission technology worked, although it made people sick from all the radiation given off, 
and caused mass fusion to perpetrate crimes against the environment as they secretly dumped all the radioactive waste wherever they could hide it. We don't know what these distribution boxes look like, but it seems as though they had the ability to power individual homes since they are referred to as being in or on people's homes. In addition to these decentralized forms of power, mass fusion provided conventional centralized power that fed substations throughout the commonwealth. This was presumably done using fission power again, because it wasn't until the moments leading up to the Great War that their fusion project was successfully running. It is also worth mentioning that Poseidon Energy also had power plants running in the area, and there are remnants of a nuclear plant that can be found in the glow, where it was destroyed in the large nuclear blast seen in the game's tutorial level. Could these power plants be operational enough that they are providing some power to much of the Commonwealth? That's certainly possible. Are the plutonium wells still functioning and providing power? This is hard to say, but there are areas of Concord that show the use of lights, so it seems that it is certainly possible. Are the household distribution boxes still working and providing power to individual buildings? Again, hard to say, but it is certainly possible. Fallout 4 has a lot more power infrastructure that is above ground than Fallout 3, with some massive power lines and towers that can be seen in some places. The clearest indication that these various plants are still providing at least some power can be seen when examining some of the power lines. Sparks can be seen jumping from the end of broken power lines or truncated pylons, indicating that, yes, these power plants are still working, at least somewhat. So why do settlements go through all the trouble of building or fixing generators when they can just tap into some sweet free electron juice that, by all indications, seems limitless? Well, I think there are some hints, mainly from larger settlements, that would have higher power draw and therefore greater demand. Let's take Diamond City as an example, which has a large central power plant smack dab in the middle. Maybe it provides power because the existing pre-war systems are unreliable. I think that's pretty reasonable, but I actually think something else is more likely. Going back to the example of the Statesman Hotel in Fallout 3, where the elevator is not working while several lights in the hotel do work. This could indicate that the existing system simply cannot provide sufficient power for power-hungry machinery. We know water purification happens in the Commonwealth, which is an energy-intensive process even in our world, and it is very possible that the existing power is insufficient to power heavier machinery, or really anything more demanding than lights, terminals, and small radios that are very commonly found. If you want a real-world example of this, splice your dryer to plug into a 120 volt outlet and see if it works. Just kidding, please don't do this. You have power, but not enough to make it work as it should. Also, sorry to all the viewers outside the states who just use 220 volts for everything. Just ask your American friend to try this experiment out for you. So in order to run the machinery needed for these larger settlements, be they defenses, water purifiers, or what have you, these settlements cannot rely on pre-war power plants for all their electrical needs. These kinds of settlements that can easily tap into existing power lines, but instead opt for their own generators are the greatest evidence that, yes, the pre-war power is there, but there are big limitations. So on the topic of power, it's time to talk about something I have wanted to touch on for a while now, and this is the perfect place to do so. Love them or hate them, Fusion cores look like they are here to stay in the Fallout universe, and these paradoxical little dudes are again brought to you by Mass Fusion. It seems ironic that a company that could not get their own fusion reactors going until just before the war somehow created handheld fusion technology, that is unless they aren't actually fusion based. Nowhere is it stated in game that they are definitely running on fusion or fission, except for the name Fusion Core, which the company Mass Fusion couldn't even get fusion going, so a name doesn't mean much. Instead, if we see how they react when you max out the nuclear physicist perk, the argument for them being fission increases. At max nuclear physicist rank, when you are in power armor and deplete a fusion core by doing just power armor things, the core will be ejected from the armor and detonate exactly like a mini nuke. Although we don't know what kind of tech would go into miniaturized fusion, because we can't even do that with these giant laser facilities in real life, depleting the deuterium and tritium fuel that a fusion system would use would seem to remove the volatile elements from the fusion core. 
So what would make it detonate with the force of a mini nuke? That is, unless it is not fusion, and rather another lie concocted by big fusion to line their pockets. The fusion core controversy is just starting, however, because these fusion cores can be found in many buildings and in the capital wasteland, usually in the basements of buildings where they can be found in a large yellow mechanical device. This worrying device is labeled as a fusion generator if you build one in your settlement and houses a fusion core that can be looted when found out in the wild. This has stirred a lot of controversy as they appear to have empowered the buildings that they can be found in for over 200 years. And yet, when you pluck them out and throw them in your power armor, you can barely get several in-game hours out of them. So what gives? Much ado has been written about this dilemma, with videos calculating whether they could possibly have power for over 200 years, and justifications that revolve around how power intensive power armor is when compared to a building, and would therefore deplete the cores much faster. Well, what if I told you that there is an alternate and honestly simpler answer? It wouldn't even necessarily negate all the other theories that have been bandied about, but I haven't heard it discussed nearly enough and it uses in-game mechanics as justification. When you find a fusion generator, take a look at it. We have lights, in fact a green light under start, and another for core cycle, so it's definitely drawing power from the core. Boom, case closed. Rad King, you're an idiot. I am most definitely an idiot, but if you compare a settlement generator that is producing electricity and the ones you find out in the commonwealth, they are identical except that the fusion core is fully seated and inserted for the ones in the settlement that we know are generating power. The ones in the wild protrude a bit and don't appear to be seated. So what? That's it? That is my great evidence? Not entirely. You see, if you take a fusion core out of a generator, the light on the generator flickers, and the whirring sound dies away as the only visible moving piece stops. But that's not the important part. The important part is that the building does not lose power. Not only does it not lose power, everything works in it as it did before. Lights, terminals, elevators, defenses, elevators, I think I said elevators twice, it all works. If this really was the only thing powering the building, then that stuff just shouldn't work. If it was partially powering the building, then some things should stop working and other things should keep working. But no, it all works. We can still believe that, theoretically, the fusion cores would still have energy in them after all this time, according to that shoddy cast video. And we can also maintain the belief that power armor is particularly energy intensive to operate and therefore drains cores faster than, I don't know, keeping a nuka fridge running for 200 years. I just seriously doubt at this point that those fusion cores are generating power for the buildings that they're in this entire time. So, there is a look at Fallout 3 and Fallout 4 exclusively because of the rather mysterious power sources that seem to still be active in the wasteland 200 years after Adam baptized the earth in fire. There are some important things to consider and discuss though about electricity in post-war America. Is it unreasonable for fans to assume that many of these power plants have been automated to the point that they can continue running and generating power after most humans are dead? In a world of AI, giant robots of destruction, tiny robots of destruction, and sometimes, but mostly not, fusion technology. Is it out of the realm of possibility that the power plants have been hardened and automated in such a way that they can operate well after the war given that they haven't been directly destroyed? In the world of Fallout, not only is it one of the smallest things that would worry me, I would almost kind of expect it. It has been justified several times in online discussion that the existence of power from the pre-war networks could be chalked up to room temperature superconductors that perfectly preserve a charge. Which, yeah, that sounds like something that would happen in Fallout, but it's not a nice simple explanation. If you like it and want to run with it, please, by all means. However, I tend to gravitate towards simpler explanations that don't require the existence of people, places, or materials that have never appeared in the universe before. Others have justified the presence of usable electricity by saying that with the massive destruction, there are fewer people and therefore fewer appliances and machines that would be drawing on that power. So, the massively reduced population that survived the war would be able to make use of pre-war power 
even if its capacity was reduced drastically. This is certainly plausible. However, there are some complications. It is very obvious that the infrastructure itself sustained substantial damage based on how entire areas don't have power or by seeing the damage firsthand. This damage would have caused shorts that would cause problems for the power plants, tripping substations and burning fuses that may or may not reasonably be repaired. This would cause great loss on the entire system and additional strain on the power plants. So it's not as simple as fewer people use less energy. A lot of that energy would go straight into the ground and be lost. Additionally, like we see in Fallout 4 with the severed power lines, in all probability the pre-war world was using three-phase electricity like we do in real life. Having some power lines break has the possibility of knocking out one of these phases, which would cause problems. And I know, my prestigious education taught me that this is a simplification of a very complicated topic, since it would depend on what lines broke, at what point in the system, and so on. But, to add more credence to my theory as to why settlements need their own generators and can't simply rely on the existing power to run heavy machinery, if most places only have access to one or two phase electricity, this would not be that much of an issue for rather simple objects like bulbs or simple electronics, but it would present a big problem for large electric motors, like something we would find on a water pump. In very simplified terms, three phase allows induction motors to start rotating on their own, whereas those same motors on two or one phase would need something to jumpstart them. If all this pre-war machinery was built to run on three phase, it will struggle or outright not work if the incoming power from the pre-war power network has been damaged and is only capable of providing one or two phases to end users. My last point is actually not about electricity or power itself, although I'm sure you are all completely psyched out of your minds after talking about phases of electricity. I'll give you a moment to calm down. Okay, good. As I was saying, a good amount of criticism is levied at Fallout 3 and Fallout 4 in particular when looking at the subject of power and why everything still seems to run just fine. The implicit explanation is that they draw power from existing systems, and the explicit arguments in this video help prove that. Although I tend to agree that explicit is better than implicit, fans already do a lot of implicit justification without even realizing it. Using power as the example, since that's what this whole video is about, if we look at the original games, we see that a lot of places did have their own generators. Bravo! That is great explicit evidence, like what can be found at the West Tech facility to get the elevators working, or the oil rig whose power systems are damaged in order to cause the rig to explode. However, go to the Brotherhood bunker in the first Fallout and just try and find the generator that is powering all that crap. Seriously, their power bill would suck, especially right now, right Europe? Anyway, other places like Vault 15 don't show or talk about generators, and even the Mariposa military base does not have power generators. Are we to take this literally to mean that these places hold a Nikolai Tesla and are powering things from the earth? No, because it is reasonable that there is a generator tucked away somewhere but it isn't particularly important that it be right there and visible for us, the players. In fact, in the case of Vault 15 and the Mariposa military base, we do finally get to see their generators when it does become pertinent in Fallout 2, since the player can use them to their advantage. They were included when it did become useful for the players to see and use them. Otherwise, the unspoken implication was that, yeah, they were likely there somewhere, we just couldn't find them. That same logic should be afforded the later games, rather than being used as a mark against them, because we don't see the exact generators that are being used to power every building. This doesn't appear to be a developer thing either, since, and please if I'm wrong someone correct me, but I could not find anything online or in game in Old World Blues. The whole of the Big MT is powered by some unknown source and they are using a metric butt-ton of power. Couple this with how maps are for the older games, where they encompass entire regions of the United States, with areas that used to have a lot of people, and contrast that with the later games that focus mostly on one city and the outlying areas. It's reasonable to not expect the Gecko power plant, for example, to be able to power the Xi down in San Francisco. 
but it's entirely plausible for plants around DC to power areas across the town. I guess what I'm saying with this last bit is that I can empathize with those that want explanations and answers, but we need to be consistent with how we afford games and developers leeway with explicitly or implicitly giving us in-world information. And now I leave you, hopefully knowing more about real life electricity, fake life electrical systems, and well, I am a little biased, but also some pretty convincing fan theories of how electricity works in Fallout. Hold to Adam's word. Take care of yourselves, and I will see you next week.